So welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new Human Experience podcast. Today is September 30th, 2021. The topic for this evening is holding space. So the, um, the last couple of weeks, I've been talking a lot about how to... Um, how to go within because of the times that we that we are in so with all these really supportive energies that are facilitating us to become a more expanded version of ourselves and that is why the that is why the last couple of weeks i've been talking a lot about how to go within how to be grounded to ourselves and also, that is why for the last day of September, I want to circle back to talk about how to be with others when we are all going through all these shifts. And these shifts in energy affects all of us. No person is immune, even though we all respond to this energy that is pushing us to shift. Um, we all respond to it in our own unique ways. So being grounded in who we are and who we are becoming is, is very important. And yet we live in a shared reality. And, um, and also we, we no, one is an, no one really exists an, as an island. Most of us, majority of us have family members, friends, colleagues, people that we um that we really enjoy being with most of them and then sometimes the people that we really have have been they have been in our lives for such a long time and they have become even though they may not be actual family they has they have become like family to us in that we care about what happens to them and how can how are we supposed to be with them when uh, when we start to find that they may not be thinking the way that we are thinking because I'm just um, for the people that are uh, frequent listeners or frequent attendees of these these um, podcasts whether live when when it's live like it is now or when it is you know they'll be listening to the, the the replay sessions is if you if you listen to this podcast or similar ones you are really the uh, amongst the more I would say prepared people because you kind of have a sense of why things are happening you're not totally in the dark and or you're not um, um, you are not you, you are much more prepared in in being able to handle these things and even if you get thrown around by um, emotionally by what's happening outside um, at least you know how to get back to your own center just by going within and doing a, a meditation or something like that to 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 ground yourself again so you the listeners of these these um podcasts not just this one but similar ones you are the the you are the 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 forerunners of the others and you have to know that you actually have um, an advantage over all the other people. Not just that you're awake, because we are all just in various stages of being awake. Um, some are you know, more awake than others, but we are all really, that's what the energy is pushing us to do, is to wake up. Um, not wake up because there's something wrong with the, 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 the reality that we are in right now, but wake up in the sense that we start to wake up to our own power, to what's really the, what we have available 
even within ourselves to be able to ground ourselves and to start to to decipher what is real and what's not real and to also to um find what is right for us to choose consciously to not be not feeling like we have no choice that we have to do certain things to to be helpless in that way in, in that all these talks is really about empowering all of you so if you are listening to this and you've listened to something similar to this then you are really in a much better place to negotiate what the reality is um, outside for the time being and then how do we interact with people that are not yet there that are not yet able to um realize that they actually have their own power that they can actually choose what is best for themselves and not have to feel like they they need to do what um perceived authorities wanted us to do so this is really about so this the topic of holding space is really all about that and i just actually just want to talk a little bit about what the energies um, for this month is all about. I remember maybe about middle of last of, of in August, that's when um, there's a big shift in energy and is actually all preparing us for this month. So what is actually going on this month? This month and also the, the, the months to come is actually it's the energy, what the energy is trying to do is to reveal to us what is hidden within. So anything that is hidden will start to come up. If there's any shadow that you have not faced within yourself, that's, this is the time when it's going to come up. And and this shadow is personal and also is collective. So anything that is, um, and let's say any anything that is done in a shady way will start to come up. May if not in September, then um, in the next couple of months before the end of the year, it's going to be brought up to the service for everyone to see. And so, what is happening is that we are actually all witnessing each other facing our own shadow. Whatever it is that you have not mastered yet, that's when all the things is going to push up, push up within you. That's why if you have not um, taken care of your own body, then these next month, you're going to really know what's happening. And if you have not dealt, like if, if there's been any, um, I would say, any disharmony within the family, anything like that, this, the next couple of months, it's all going to come up so that it's going to blow up in our face to the extent that we, we start to, um, not that we, not that we are going to disown our family, but that everything is going to be brought up so that we can see what's what's fueling what really the insecurity is underneath all of that so that we can start to um find out where we are at because collectively we are kind of we've lost we are lost we 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 because we don't know who we truly are how powerful we truly are to not just um, what brought all this up is, is through a virus. 
However, our immune system is actually so much more robust. It is just that we have not, we have not um, been, um, we've been, been bombarded with so much fear. And that fear is actually, fear cannot be, I would say, fear cannot be injected into us. We have to have fear within ourselves first. And then when other people um, show the fear and, and we see the fear around us, that's when whatever it is, the fear that is within us is going to show up and become so heightened so that we actually have to face it. And what we actually have to face is really our own shadow. Why it is that we um, have to fear, have to play with this idea of fear. And we, when we see this, when we, whatever it is that is that we we hidden, wherever it is that that is the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Whatever it is that is the cause for us to be lost, to to agree to be disempowered, to agree to. Um, to compromise our own virtue in order to be accepted, in order to, to get a semblance of that power back from outside of us. When we don't own that power within us, when we don't recognize that power within us, we will start to look for it outside and when we start to look for it outside, that's when we give our power away. And so now the, 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 the energy is really showing us where we have given our power away. And we have all done this to um, various extent. We, like, there is no one, um, not me, not anyone else that um, not not any other leaders that you think you look up to and you put on a pedestal no um i think now is really the time for us to see within ourselves and also within other people as well we see the shadow the part of us that we have not looked at in order to to get back at knowing who we truly are to to start to ground within to own our own shadow it is all good and and well to do that that inner work within ourselves and um i want to actually bring out that yes we if we do the, the, the inner work ourselves, we can actually start to let go of these fear and we'll be able to go through these times, no matter what's happening outside, we will, we will be able to find the path for us to go forward, no matter where it is that we want. Because when we really get connected with the power within, then we know that there's really nothing that can stop us, nothing that can um, maybe we we may need to take a, a detour. However, we will always be able to find our own path. We will always be able to um, do things the way that really resonate with us. It is only through fear that we would give that power away, give our own power away. Mm -hmm. However, no matter how much you are grounded in yourself, you have to always know that we, because we are moving together as a collective. So 
it is really our how we relate to other people that are not on the same page with us that really is going to um, support us or not or derail us so that's really important so what is holding space and why is holding space important now holding space is is i would say a great tool for everyone to to have and um so holding space in a nutshell is simply to be with someone else it can be a one other person or it can be a group of other people but holding space is simply to be with them um meaning so what do i mean by with them to to be so so let me just backtrack a bit so what do i mean by to be with them to be is is being present being present with them so it it kind of assume that you have to do some some inner work first so that you can you know when you are present with yourself when you know what that feels like then you can be with press you can be present with someone else it really is to treat that other person or that group of people as equal not as you know you are better than them because you know more you're more conscious you you know what's going on and it's it's not about that when you are with them you you are not more than you're not less than you are simply with them you you're trying to understand where they are at it's not about you know telling them where they need to go or or, or, or how they should um be but it's really about understand understanding where they are at it's about so understanding where they're at meaning that you understand let's say if they if they say okay i want to you know um go and get vaccinated you understand why they think they need to do that you on you try to um be with them and ask questions to not to judge them so let go of your judgment about you know what is whether the 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 it is good to do to to take a certain procedure or not no it's not about um it's not about judging them it's not about imposing your will on them it's about getting to know who they are and where they're at at that at that moment it's about seeing who they truly are it's about understanding the the inner conversation that they are having they and and finding out really why they are doing what they are doing so that's really all you are doing is to understand them to be with them it's not about trying to you know talk down to them because nobody wants to be talked down to our ego each one our ego does not like that so if you are with someone if you are um like if somebody come to you and share some information with you then in order to hold space for them you have to be there with them you have to really feel what they are feeling and understand why they are doing what they are doing without needing to agree with them you are simply understanding them you're simply being with them so it's really a peer relationship holding space really you need to look at them and see them as equal see them 
from one soul to another soul. Meaning that you, you leave your human judgment, emotions, all of that aside, and simply understand them from a soul level, why they need to have that experience that they are having. So that's all you need to do. No need to share with them what you think is right for them, because you don't know them. You are not an expert. You don't live their lives. You don't walk in their shoes. It does not give you, if they share something with you, it does not give you um, a blank check, check for you to tell them, you know, what is, um, what's really going on. There is no space yet. You're not there yet. When someone comes and shares something with you, then, and you choose to hold space with them, then what you need to do is really treat them as peer. There are so many ways of being with other people. You can, you can, um, you can, for example, people that are miserable, they like to have other people to be miserable with them. So, so that's one way of being with other people. But when you hold space for someone else, that's, you're not doing that. You're not, you're not, um, even though you understand that where they're at, but also you don't take on their, you don't take on their um, mentality. You don't take on their, um, their sense of helplessness. You don't have to take on their sense of being a victim or you, so any of that. You don't take on where they're at. You simply be with them where they're at you know where they're at, you understand what they feel as much as you can. And if you don't understand, then ask questions. So to get to the point where you actually understand how they can think the way they think. So that is really the, the, the first job of holding space for someone else is to really see them really be with them where they're at to understand why they are choosing that experience for themselves. That is the most important thing we can do for someone else, especially if they, especially if they're not on the same page as you. And I already mentioned that nobody likes to be told that they are wrong. Nobody likes to be judged. So when you, when you try to share, even though from your point of view, you really believe what you believe. However, in order to really be in service to someone else, it does not help them when you try to um, judge them. It does not help them when you try to tell them that they are wrong. It actually pushed them away. It actually, because they are actually starting, beginning to see the shadow, their own shadow. They may not consciously know that this is all their own inner um, um, victim, um, that's coming out, they may not understand that yet. So if you try to just share where you are at, it may not be well received. They are actually thinking that you are judging them, even though you may not be judging them. You are simply sharing where you're at, but holding space really does not um, does not involve that you have to share your opinion with them 
the first and the most important thing is to really see them and understand why they are experiencing and choosing to experience that so that you understand where they're at. So meet the other person or the, the other group of people where they are at and do your best to understand them. And when you are there, when you actually understand why they choose that experience for themselves, then you can start to, if you want to, be the mirror for them. You don't have to tell them what they are. You don't have to tell them what is, um, what is the, according to you, what is the, the right way or what your belief is, what you can do is simply let them understand where they are at because the chances are they don't know it yet. They are simply reacting to all these inten intense energy. They don't know where they're at yet. They are, they are still, a lot of people are still in the, the, the face of, you know, trying to understand what is going on because they really don't know what is going on. So apart from understanding why they are experiencing what they are experiencing is to be the mirror, assist them to see a bigger picture. Ultimately, they are the one who needs to solve their own problem. They're the one that is living their life. No matter how, um, even if they're family, you know, even if you are living in the same household, in the same apartment, in the same room with them, you're not in their head. You don't know what they are going through. So what you can do is simply allow them to be, to not judge them, to not give any cause for them to, to think that they are um, wrong. It's, it's not the, don't show them that they are wrong. Just be with them and just start to ask questions. Don't give answers, ask questions so that they can clarify for themselves where they are at. That's all you need to do is to assist them to find out where they are at with all that is going on, all the craziness that's going on in their lives, to just ask very gentle questions and not to overstep. If you if you ask some questions and, and you feel that they are so overwhelmed, then, then stop. Just ask the next question only if they are, if you feel that they can handle it. So really be compassionate because all of this, um, you have actually gone through it yourself. I'm quite sure, like I remember myself at first, like in 2020, I was, I was at a loss, what's going on? Even though on some level, I know what is actually going on, but it is um, at a soul level, I may know what's going on, but at the human level, I, it took me a while to really process all of that. And that's really what everyone else is now catching up to. It's going to take a while for them to really catch up, to really see what it is that is going on. And what it is that's going on is not just outside, it's mostly within, because once they are clear where they are at and what it is that are, that's really being reflected within themselves, all these fear, all, all of these um, victimhood, it's actually, it's within them. But they don't see it yet. 
we are the last person usually to see our own shadow. So you have to understand that that's what's going on with them is that they're the last person to know that the fear is not outside, it's within them. So be gentle and ask questions to assist them in really finding out what it is that they need to look at inside. And when you are really able to serve them in that way, to hold the space for them to see them, you see them first and then hold the mirror up so that they can see themselves. They can see where they are at and you can start to be supportive when they begin to, to when, the, when the, the dust begin to settle, they actually see what is going on and that will come that will all come and we are in the process of that now. So that's why it's so intense. And that's why being able to hold space for someone else to go through this process is serving, is really to serve them. It's the most important thing to remember is you're not, interacting with someone so that you can tell them um, your point of view. It's your point of view may not serve them. You are interacting with someone with the intention to be of service to them. And you have to really think about from their point of view, how are they going to receive the words you say sometimes the less said the better it is going to be so just whole space is also to be of service to, for them it's not really to tell them you know all the the the, the worst thing that can happen to them if they, if they take certain procedure, they are going to die, they're going to um, have organ failure. They may not be on the same page with what it is. And when they are not in the same page, they, they only see you, when they hear you see, like telling all that, it actually, um, they're not ready to see the reality yet. So don't just throw the, the reality at them. When you throw the reality in front of somebody, um, before they are ready to hear it, before they are ready to receive it, you actually cut off your own um, you're not serving them. You are simply trying to control them and manipulate them to see your point of view. And that's no different from what people in authority are doing. They are also trying to manipulate them. So it's just one way of manipulating versus your way of manipulating. That's why throwing the reality at somebody's face when they are not ready to hear it is not serving them. What's serving them is really to hold space for them, to demonstrate to them that you are actually on their side. You are their friend, you are their family. And no matter where they're at, I know it's not easy because, yes, these procedures may really um, lead to all of these consequences. 
And yet the more you throw reality at someone else before they are ready to hear it, you are not serving them. You are simply doing it out of your own fear. So you have to own that. You have to recognize that it is your own attachment that is doing that. So it is not your life to live. It is their life to live. And you are there really to serve them. And the best way to serve them is to be compassionate. Only give them as much as they can handle. And don't try to throw what is reality in front of them until they are, until you really understand or have the sense that they are open, they have some opening to it. And when they are open to it, then you can share a little bit, not the whole truth, maybe just a little bit of it. And then if they are, if after you've shared that little bit and they are still okay, they are not overwhelmed, then you can share a little bit more. So you have to be really, when you're holding space for someone else, you really need to know that you are serving them you have to hold that space of being in service of someone else. And I know um, you may think that, oh, okay, maybe if I don't say all these things, then when they actually go to the procedure, go through the procedure, then that's too late. I, you know, I failed them. It's no, it's not is you can never fail them when you understand that you are here to hold space for them to live their life. Maybe their life is very different from what you envision that it should be. They are the ones who is in charge of their life. And it's very important that especially with families and close friends, you want to protect them. However, you can protect them best by being compassionate and not to manipulate them um, the way that, like out of your own attachment rather than what's good for them. So what is good for them? I don't know. Nobody knows. Only they themselves know. So all you are doing when you are holding space for someone else, you're holding space for them to go through their process. You're not holding space for them so that they can come to understand what you understand. That's, that's kind of, um, that's a manipulation you're holding space for them to have their process. And it does not matter what, where their process is going to tick them. You are simply holding space for them to get clear. You are simply there to be the witness, the mirror for them. So how do we actually so this, this holding space then is not a very powerful position then, you may argue, but um, that's actually not true. I just want to talk about the next part is, I wanted to talk about the energetic part of it is, is that um, I want to, to, to raise this question, this, this, item, this, this item about what is entanglement. When you are 
when you are family with someone, when you are good friends with someone, you are energetically entangled with them. And that even though you may not have told them um, what your belief is, even when they like what what you know, what the reality according to you is, even though you may not be sharing with them, they may not be ready to hear that. But energetically, you are still actually entangled with them. And energetically, you are still share that. You are still sharing that with them. And that is the best way to hold space for them. And if you try to jump the gun and to throw the reality as you know it in front of them um, before they are ready to hear it, you actually create that resistance within them that energetically they are also resisting you. And, and that like all of that codes that, you, that is being passed even without us speaking a word there are codes being exchanged, but because you have created that um, block, that they block you because they, they think that you, what you're doing is too far out, they're not ready to receive it. They actually block your, block you energetically as well. That's why when you don't try to throw reality in front of somebody's face before they are ready to hear it and to, to, to listen to it, then you actually still leave room for you to share the code the en with them energetically without them um, trying to block you energetically. So when you hold space with someone, you actually even without you saying anything, the reality codes is going to be shared with them and they will respond to it in some way. So I just want to sum up that holding space is a very simple process. The first thing really needs is that you are ready you you have looked within yourself and you have grounded within yourself first you don't have to be a hundred percent grounded all the time but at least do some of that inner work so that you don't get triggered and react so that you can um become neutral and be in service of someone else. So you being ready and open with, to be, to, to spend time with another person. So that's the first thing is you have to be ready to hold space for someone else. And the second, is really you have to understand that you are meeting them wherever they are at without judgment, without needing to save them or without having to take on their baggage. You're not there to save anyone. You're not there to guide them. You're not there to manipulate them. You are simply there to see them. You're simply there to understand them. You're simply there to be with them. And when you see them, you also see them as being perfect already, no matter where they're at. If they are, let's say, having some symptoms, if they are not doing well, you have to understand that. They even if they their body may be compromised or emotionally they may be compromised, but they are actually perfect already. Their soul is actually in charge. 
and wherever they are at is simply perfect. That is where they needed to be in that moment. You are there to be their mirror so that they can, so that you can allow them to see whatever it is that they are ready to see within themselves. And to hold space for someone is that you are there to meet them as one soul meeting another soul. And when souls meet, you create a sacred space for transformation to take place naturally, for transformation to take place at their pace, not your pace, but at their pace. So don't try to um, so that's really, that's, that's it. That's all you need to do is just get yourself ready, see them as already perfect and understand where they are at. And also be there to be their mirror and to meet them as one so meets another. You're there to create that sacred space so that they can be in charge of their own transformation. And that really is what holding space is all about. And in the next couple of months and maybe even a couple of years, those who are in the know in this moment really is called to hold space for other people big time is to hold space for them so that they can come into their own at their own pace and when you really is able to see them and know that they are perfect wherever they are at. You are really doing this out of service to serve them rather than to serve yourself. And that really is what holding space is about. And that's all I have to share with you.